This is PSP 1000, but in a different way. I got this PSP from a person who tried to mod this PSP a couple of years ago, but the things are not going well. So he packs all the things in a bag, and this console stays forgotten. The parts are covered with dust and dirt, and some are damaged and not looking very promising. The case is pretty damaged as well. I was told by the owner that he tried to paint the case, but after all, the paint wasn't looking good. So he tried to remove the paint using a nitro thinner, which is a pretty bad idea. And the nitro thinner has smelted the plastic to some point. In general, this PSP is nothing more than a pile of trash. But I've decided to give a try. So before I start with anything, I have to partially assemble this console. And now to see, is this PSP going to start or not? I assemble some basic parts, I place the battery and I try to start the PSP. But nothing happens. I say it, okay, maybe the battery is not compatible or the battery is empty. And I say it, let's try with a charger. But here is another problem. One of the pins is broken. And fortunately, I found a pin in the plastic bag. Carefully, I solder the missing pin back to the board. I connect the power cable and the PSP has started, which I don't really expect. Now, I run over more tests. I want to be sure if this console working or not. While testing, all was fine, but something is telling me that this thing won't last for long. But we're gonna come to that part later. Now, I move to cleaning. And first, I start with cleaning and checking the electronics. To clean the PSP, I'm using 96% isopropyl alcohol, brushes and compressed air. Because the motherboard has a little corrosion around some components, I wash the whole motherboard using isopropyl alcohol. And then, I dry the motherboard using a hair dryer. The other parts, I wash it as well. Or I clean it a little differently, because not all parts can be washed. And a few words about this PSP. This is the original PlayStation Portable. This console is released back in 2004 in Japan and hit the world market in 2005, which now is 18 years ago, I mean in time when I make this video. Just to give some time perspective, this model is released a one year and something before the PlayStation 3 and about a two years and something before the very first iPhone. So this is a pretty old thing. The specs of this model are 32 megabytes of RAM, 2 megabytes of video memory, 4.3 inch TFT LCD widescreen, Pro Duo memory card support, Wi-Fi, USB 2.0 B-type support, headset support, and etc. For nowadays standards, this is ridiculous. But back in the day, this PSP was something very big on the market. After finish with cleaning the electronics, I moved to the case. So here, first I start with removing the surplus melted plastic parts. The case is pretty badly damaged and broken to some places. And yes, I can find and buy a new case. But this is not a point to restore something. So I'm going to restore this old case. The front glass to the case isn't removable as to the other models, so the only thing here is to cut the front glass, which actually I did. I need a little bit more time until I cut the glass, then remove the surplus plastic and make a nice definition to all four sides. But after some work, everything is looking just fine. After I finished with making the basic modifications, I moved to wash the case and as well I washed some other parts, like the buttons and the metal parts from the case. After I wash the case and the case gets dry, I moved to making some repairs. Now using a super glue, carefully I stick all the parts where the case was broken or cracked. And after the glue gets dry, Again, I have done some adjustments. And after the glue gets dry, again, I have done some additional adjustments, like removing the scratches using very fine sandpaper, removing some plastics as well using scalper, 
and I re-clean the whole case using isopropyl alcohol. When I'm done with the case, I grab a black made spray and I paint the case. Also, over the case, I have created something like meteor metal carbon effect, which is better than the flat usual paint. It's better because this paint is much more durable and it will last for a very, very long. And finally, everything is ready. And I start with assembling the PSP. I need a little time to figure out what from where is and what where to place. The PSP isn't a very complicated device, so the assembling isn't that hard. While assembling, I have to do a few small adjustments to the case as well, but overall, everything is just fine. After I finish with assembling, I connect the power adapter and the PSP started normally. Now I start with further testing, doing some customizations, playing around, but suddenly the buttons stop at working. Then suddenly the buttons just continue working and then the PSP screen went black and then just shut down. A long story short, the problem was caused by a bad power adapter. I have to disassemble the whole PSP again, I took the motherboard to a friend who has more equipment and we found and fixed the problem. One of the chips has a short circuit, but in any case this wasn't hard to fix. Unfortunately, I didn't record this process because I didn't believe that this PSP will work again. But here it is, working again. The other problem that I have here is the battery. Because of the battery, I cannot run updates to this PlayStation. I have some other batteries from other PSP models. I have to do some adjustments here as well. I mean, I cut off some plastics from the battery, but in the end, I fit the battery to this PSP. Also here, the battery didn't start to charge. And I thought, no, one more problem. But after some time, the battery percentage started going up. So I waited a little bit until the battery start charging. Now I connect the PSP to the computer and I download and transfer the software updates. And here I wait until the battery has charged more than 50% and I start with updating the software. And finally, this PSP is running newer, 6.60 version. The newer version is much more flexible and easier to do more customization. Anyway, again, I cross over one more in-depth testing process. And finally, after all changes, 
this console is fully functional. And this is the final result. And a couple of words about this PlayStation Portable. Anything on this PSP is fully functional and working perfectly fine. Maybe this PSP looks impossible to restore, but in the end, after putting some time and work, everything is working just fine. Because there is no front glass, the display looks much clean, and the colors are looking more vivid and live. And the only thing that is missing here is the button to open the UMD or the CD door. But using some spudger or something, the door can be still opened and closed. The gaming performance are much better than expected. I expect locks in some games. But no, all is going just fine. And the other thing that I like about this PSP are the case ergonomics. The case is a little bit thicker compared with other PSP models, but with a better and more comfortable ergonomics. And also, I'm very very glad because I backed this console in function again. And yes, I really enjoyed playing some older games. Well, and this is all about this PlayStation Portable. Maybe this game console is old, but still great to have a very nice fun. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I hope this video will give ideas and inspiration to back some stuff in function again, or make some stuff better. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.